Hey, it's me, Tim, and we're back at the New Perspectives Music Guitar Kits today, where we're gonna talk about this whole process of making these kits. So, to catch you up very quickly, I have some CNC files that are downloadable plans that you can buy, and you can cut out these guitar parts on your CNC, or you can buy the parts already pre-cut from me and then build your guitar. And to go along with all these, I'm making these videos that are a little more in-depth than usual for me about showing some of the steps and processes to either cut the parts out on the CNC, or now we're getting into the fun stuff that everybody might find useful to actually finishing the guitar and putting it together. So today, uh, after we've already went and cut these parts out in the CNC and put them together and roughed in the frets, we're going to actually do a full proper fret job on this neck and get it ready for the next step, which will be doing the final finish sanding, cutting out a headstock on it, and then, you know, fitting it to the guitar, etc., etc. So, uh, let's dig in. Whether you're making it yourself or you're buying it from me, these necks are not finished when you get to this point. Um, I, the ones I'm selling are just sanded down to 120 grit and they, you know, need to have all this, this sort of stuff done. And, and there's all sorts of fancy expensive tools you can buy to do this, but you can also not buy those fancy expensive tools. And I'm going to show you, uh, some of the, the tools that I have and use and some of the ways you can get around using them. The first thing I'm going to do is, uh, level and crown these frets and so what I want to do is I want to make these ends nice and smooth and I want to make sure they're all the same height and I actually want to just take these last couple frets here and make them just a teeny tiny bit lower just to to help with uh, getting your action down nice and low and smooth um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my neck is flat and straight before I do this work because if the neck has a little bit of a bow in it or is bowing up somewhere and I start leveling all these frets, I'm gonna level them to the curve and I wanna level them to this piece of wood being as straight and flat as possible. So there are some tools that are like notch straight edges like this one I have from Skyscraper Guitars, great company, I strongly support them. And um, they have these little notches that match up to the scale length of the strings. This is a 25 and a half inch scale which is called a fender scale on this. Um, and so I can use this ruler and I can put it down on top of my neck. So I've got the neck laid out flat and I just put these notches right over the frets and I can see no gaps anywhere. I can see, I can't rock this. It's actually sitting nice and flat. Actually, there's a little bit of an up rock right here. I'm just getting a tiny bit of a rock. You see that? So that might just be a slight imperfection that I can't do anything about, but I can sure try by just taking this Allen key into the truss rod and seeing if I can just put a little bit of tension on this truss rod to get it nice and flat and straight right now. And yeah, that did it. There's a, uh, I don't feel any rock anymore. And I can see there's no gaps of light sticking out. You know what, maybe I will, uh, just so you can see it, I'm gonna go and create a gap so you can see what it should not look like. So I'm gonna turn this truss rod and put a little bit of a bow in this neck. And now when I put this ruler on, you can see it's it's got a little bit of rock in it. See how it's going up and down? And see here at the end how there's that little bit of gap of light. Now it's gone because I rocked it. Right now I have an up bow I just, I just put into this neck. As so you see down here, when I, I push it down towards the front, there's a little light and I can push it towards the back and make it straight. So we want to get, we turn the truss rod the other way. And this also just shows that our truss rod is working, which you should always check before you put in because sometimes they're broken. And now I've got no, no gap in the middle. The end is touching flush, the beginning is touching flush, and I can't rock it. So my neck is nice and straight and flat and ready to work. So now you're saying to yourself, self, I'm only going to make one guitar. I don't want to buy one of these things. I didn't want to buy one either. And uh, so I just started making my own out of some old pieces of ruler. You can go to like a store like Harbor Freight and you can buy a $1 ruler and you just hold it up against the frets, put a little mark using your woodworking tools because it's aluminum. You can just cut little slots and you can make your own random scales and so sometimes I'll make like I'll have like a weird scale instrument I'm building and I'll I'll just do that I'll just make a, a simple little thing like this um to do that and just any dollar store ruler as long as it's somewhat straight and flat it'll be close enough for you okay so now I want to tape off this fingerboard to protect it while I work on it and I'm just going to use regular old masking tape 
I'm just gonna use some masking tape. I have this little, I'm gonna cut it with a razor blade into thinner strips because I only have this one size of masking tape on me. And I'm gonna tape between each fret all along the whole fingerboard. And I might even put a piece along this edge here to protect this edge. And, and you guys know me, I am like so not into wasting stuff and it does sometimes feel like I use a lot of tape and it feels a little bit wasteful, but um, in order to make a, a working playing guitar that, you know, plays well and will make people happy for years to come, it kind of seems like it's worth it, huh? Now, the zero fret uh, makes our setups a lot easier, which we'll get to later. And um, I, I usually put in it looks like I did on this one. I usually put in a slightly higher fret here. Sometimes I don't, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to level this one. I want to, I want to keep that high and, um, and make sure it's just like higher than this one by just the tiniest, tiniest bit. So we're going to put a piece of tape right over that and just start right on that first fret. Missed the spot. Don't want that, especially on a blonde neck like this, that fret dust will really show up. If you're working on like an, an ebony neck, you can kind of get away with uh, the little more, the black sort of hides things. Okay, now we'll check and see if we have any of these frets that are ridiculously high. Again, we're gonna ignore the zero fret and just, uh, just make sure that they're all pretty close to where we want them. And I'm gonna use uh, what's called a fret rocking tool. This is the square rocker. This is the one that I sell that has some like some other built-in functions to it. And so you'll see it has all these different size sides and that's so you can span across three frets and fit. So like the longer side you'll use down here and then maybe the shorter side you'll use up here and you can only touch three frets. And the idea being, if you put it across three frets and, and it rocks, that means the one in the middle is too high. Pretty simple. Definitely start at the beginning and we check them, right? I'm pushing down fairly firmly and I'm seeing if it will rock back and forth a little bit like that. And I'm going across the whole fret, not just in one spot. And you can see it's got a little bit of a rock right here. Hear that? A little bit right there and then none in the middle. So these two little ends are just a teeny tiny bit high. I'm gonna try hammering them first, just a little bit. And so I might have to hit those with a little bit of a file. And I'm actually gonna use a pretty aggressive little bastard file right now, because we're gonna clean it all up later. Just give a couple, just these little ends here are just a little high. Yep, there we go. No more rock. And that took care of it. And this is just a regular old little file. This is nothing fancy. It's not a guitar tool, you know, a couple bucks. Um, it's, it's not super aggressive. I don't want to go too crazy, but you know, it's strong enough to take a little metal off. Now, suppose, again, you're the guy, you make it one guitar, you don't want to spend 20 something dollars on, like, you know, a tool that just does this job. You don't need it. You may have already bought one of my more universal woodworking tools called the square, which can do a lot of the frets, but not all of them because they get too small up here, right? When they start getting too small, you just use a razor blade. And uh, you'll see like this razor blade here, if it's a nice fresh razor blade, this edge is remarkably straight and you can, it'll work from here, just about all the way up to here where it starts to get a little bit tight and you, you'll be touching a fourth fret so it won't rock properly. You can use the shorter edge, maybe on the last couple frets on some guitars, but what you do, since it's just a razor blade, when you get up here to the point where it's getting too long, yeah, now it'll fit. Or you can, you know, cut it with a saw or whatever. And uh, it's not wasteful too, because you can save it just in case you ever do make another guitar. And now I know that these are pretty level. Uh, well, they are level. Uh, I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna just 
clean them all up with a little bit of sandpaper to make sure that they're just as perfect as possible. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm not gonna use this one because it's the same color as my tape. <laughs> I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm gonna just color in the tops of all these frets. And this is just gonna help me see if I have any high spots and make sure I've, once I've taken all of the magic marker off, we'll be level. I have this other amazing tool from Skyscraper Guitars again, uh, and this is a fret leveling tool. So you, you put peel and stick sandpaper, I use spray glue, and you put sandpaper on it, and you can run it across this whole fingerboard to even everything out. And I want to just take this bar, and I want to be nice and even and level, and just... I want to try to avoid touching my, my uh, zero fret, of course, but... So you can see when I just quickly slide it over, get a little closer, you can see some spots where the ink goes off and where it doesn't go off. So like that spot there, there's no ink and there's ink here. That means that was just a wee bit higher. And now, it's all starting to be just about perfect up there. Uh, I'm not too worried about that last fret. If you don't have this tool, you can just use a regular woodworking level and put a little sandpaper on it. See, almost all my ink is gone. I actually have a shorter one of these two, which I can then use to make these top frets just a little bit lower. Like I said, I just want to kind of have a little bit of a dive up here. So now in the process of doing that, you can see that we got a little bit of these like sort of flat spots that happened on the fret. So we want to try to round them off again to get that fret shape. And this is a step that, again, you need a fancy tool or you could just not do it, uh, honestly, and just kind of skip to the next steps. But what we have here, there are all sorts of different types of um, crowning frets, and, or files rather, and they're uh, like a little arched. You kind of see in there. It's like a little like fret shaped file. So I can take these and I can go right over, right over the frets like this and round them out again. And they're actually kind of nice for cleaning up these edges a little bit where they get a little sharp. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna go right over all these frets with this fret ruler or fret file and give the ends a little extra love. So, you know, that's one where there's not a lot of great alternatives without having this. You could sit with a regular file and just very carefully sort of try to round it out, but it's pretty time consuming. Um, you might not even need to worry about it. Like these frets are so, there's only a few of them that really got a little bit of a flat spot from being high. Um, there's hardly anything to do here. I want to start treating my zero fret like I'm treating the rest of the frets, you know, cleaning up the edges and making it nice and pretty too. Now we get to the hardest part and the, uh, the trickiest part is I want to make these edges feel good primarily so when you're playing they don't feel sharp. And I also want to try and make them look good if I can. Uh, and I am honestly not the best at this, um, but I do the best I can and I get better every time with practice just like anybody else. Um, but so, you know, my concern, of course, is them not being sharp on, on players' fingers, and I can feel like just like a little bit of a burr. And so there's a couple things that are happening that make it feel sharp. One is the metal actually sticking out beyond the fingerboard, and the other is there being sharp corners um, on these ends. So I want to kind of round this, this whole edge over and make it feel nice and smooth. And so I'm using this fancy little file I got from Stumac. It's got a files on the side and smooth edges and I can kind of go right in here like this and sort of round go around I'm holding it right now so I'm not doing a good job but that's the basic motion I want to do is to, to take off any extra material that might be there and give it a, a soft radius right there if you don't want to go out and buy one of these specialty little files, you can kind of poke around in the files you have and see what you have that might work for the job, something small or whatever. And a great trick is to just use a triangular file. You can pick these up relatively inexpensively. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Um, and what I did with this one is I just sanded this one side smooth. And so if I put this side against the fingerboard, I can angle it up 
and do basically the same thing as this file. Get that rounded off. I just noticed that this fret here has a little bit of movement in it, which is definitely not good. And so there's a real easy fix for that. And it's just a little thin CA glue. And I'm gonna drop, no, I, I'm gonna, it's gonna stick to the tape and I'm gonna have to have a little bit of an issue getting rid of the tape in a little bit, but I'm gonna just pour just a drop right down this end. And it's gonna, so thin, it's gonna run right through, a little bit more, right down through the, um, the tangs and now with that drop of glue in there I'm just going to push on it and wait a minute okay now I got it sitting still but it's sitting still just a little bit higher than it was because before when it was loose and I was pushing down I probably should have checked for that it was actually uh, moving on me a little bit so I'm gonna have to just check that there we go Now that we have all that out of the way, it's time to do my final uh, sanding on it. And what I have here is uh, little pieces of sandpaper that I've already pre-cut, starting at 400 grit and working my way up to 3000 grit. And I'm gonna use those to sand this down. Some people will use things like these, um, these sanding pads, which actually work really well and I do use them sometimes. Um, but I'm just using this cheap sandpaper that I have laying around because I already have it. And uh, I'm missing a couple steps in between, but I'm close enough to all the steps that I need between 400 and 3000. And um, what I used to do and what you can do is uh, just use your finger because your finger will actually sort of flex and contour around the fret as you slide it, but your finger does get tired doing that. Um, so what I do is I learned this from my buddy Crash and he told me not to share all his secrets, but I'm sharing them anyway, sorry Crash. Um, this is a, a roll of plastic bags, like little plastic like dog waste bags that I have rolled up in tape and they will squish like my finger without making my finger tired. So I can take this piece of sandpaper that I cut, wrap it around there and just, I can go this way and I can go this way. Well, this piece is a little short. and it'll contour and sort of get around all these sides of the fret in both directions. There you go, and it feels like it takes forever while you're doing it, but it really doesn't. I mean, it took me about 10 minutes to get here, but I'm not done yet. So a little trick I learned from Crash is I have these, um, these are manicurist blocks. This one has four sides and I'm going to go and hit it all with these manicurist blocks starting on the, the roughest side first. They're all numbered. There's one. And this is probably about two or three thousand grit, kind of like the last sandpaper I did. I could probably even skip this one. See, this looks real nice. But if you have a buffer, either like the Dremel or a stationary buffer, you could go ahead and polish these up with some polishing compound and get them even shinier. Just for a little comparison, you can see the three I buffed and the three I didn't. Big difference, huh? The tape peeled up on me a little bit there, so I'm gonna have a spot I'm probably gonna have to clean, but. Now I'm ready to peel the tape off and have a look, but uh, here's something to notice. Look at my hands, they're filthy with that. Fine metal dust, so I wanna go wash my hands real good before I do this to try and keep my fingerboard clean. I think that looks pretty good. I might have a little bit more cleanup to do here and there on it, but I'm not gonna worry about that until I get it on the guitar and ready to finish it. Um, but now that I've peeled all the tape off, this is something I like to do, and you have to be careful because it's no longer protected. I always notice that just the thickness of the tape does affect 
how these ends feel to me. I feel like because I'm, when I'm filing them in flush against the tape, when I pull the tape off, there's that, that just barely noticeable amount of metal that sticks out. So now that I've done all of this, I like to just go and just do one quick little file. I think that's a good place to stop for now. And it's it's very possible that when you go to put this neck on your guitar and start putting strings on it, that you'll find you missed a spot. And that's okay, man, it happens to all of us. You might have to go in and clean up a little fret here and there. Um, but this should get you pretty close to perfect. So now next up, we still need to finish sanding the body and then putting out the electronics and we're gonna have to finish everything. And on this neck, we still have some work to do too because I'm using the paddle headstock that's available in the kit instead of the other style headstock that's available where it's already cut out so i still have to drill holes for uh, tuners and i have to cut my headstock shape and i have to make a nut for it um so we'll do that maybe finish it uh and that should be another uh useful video that's a little bit more in depth than i usually do for you talking about some of the, the ways i think about it instead of just showing you with a, a bunch of silly music all right see you next time